my name is Daniela. I am a transportation analyst at Cambridge Systematics. Today, I'm here to talk about mapping the curb, its importance and techniques municipalities, uh, different DOTs can implement to, so that the private sector can also help them map the curb. So I don't know if there's anyone here from Coward or Cord, or if you've heard of them, I'm probably mispronouncing it, so excuse me if I am. Um, they completed a map with the city of New York and they inventoried all of the curb space and their diverse uses. Okay, so what do I mean by not the curb? For the purposes of this talk, I'm interested in discussing the importance, specifically in the transportation industry, of the space directly adjacent to the definition of OSM's curb, so on the roadside and on the sidewalk side. So not specifically what the curb is and the OSM dictionary sorts. So by my definition, you would consider this street parking. That's what the curb is mostly used for nowadays. It won't be soon, hopefully, and with autonomous vehicles, it really won't be. Uh, bus stops, bus lanes, bicycle lanes, loading zones, and TNC drop-off and pickup areas. TNCs would be transportation network companies like Lyft and Uber. Um, so this interest, uh, interest in mapping the curve started after I did a case study for uh, state DOT, and they wanted to learn about strategies to maybe possibly consider the curb as an asset, a transportation asset. So the curb is a limited resource with a growing demand for access to further develop. Oh, what did I do? I don't know what I did. She's back. Okay, so where was I? So optimizing the curb for multiple, to support multiples, multiple simultaneous opportunities for transportation choices is quite important. So what this means is um, you can have the curb support tr right now traffic during peak, peak times. So you turn it into a lane and then it can be street parking for residents at nighttime. During the day, it can be specifically um, designated for loading zones, so deliveries. And you can also have it for bike lanes, and then you would map it specifically for each use. So when you download that data, you, and I will teach you how, uh, you have the different uses of that specific space. So, um, Considering how I only have five minutes, I'll run through some examples of how, how you can use OSM to map multiple uses within a static map, and then use those multiple uses for something non-static. Um, otherwise, I would have done a little workshop on how to do it, but I'll just show you some examples. So to answer this question, I went on the OSM Slack, and if the person who answered my question is here, I would love to meet you. I don't know who you are. Uh, so I asked, like, hey, how would you map flexible uses on the curb um, based on time zones or best based on demand, blah, 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 or based on technological changes in transportation? So once we just don't need parking, what are we going to do? Because uh, uh, do you know them? <gasps> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. <laughs> So we talked about this, and then he, he, I think, yeah, he, uh, one minute, okay, sorry, yeah, okay, blah, 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 this worked out. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll show you some examples. Uh, so he, this is Highland Avenue in Staten Island. So uh, the MTA of New York City designated the bus lane to be on the curb during brush time, and then at different times, they're considering different uses for it. So how can you map that? Um, it's actually with conditional tagging. I didn't go through the answers, but it was through conditional tagging. Uh, this is a pilot program that uh, the city of Fort Lauderdale did in East Las Olas Boulevard with Lyft and Uber. And so it, it lasted for six months, and now they're reconsidering to see if they would designate TNC pickup and drop-off areas. Um, 
This one was, oh, wait. Okay, this is a flexible zone lane in Barcelona. Time's up. Okay, thank you. So this actually is using only flexible zones. The lane in the middle is an actual traffic lane. The curved side is residential parking at nighttime, loading zone um, during like noonish time, and during peak time, they open it up for traffic or they designate it for bike traffic. Depends, so how do you do this? You do it through conditional tagging and OSM. Once you don't download that data, then you can use through different apps, even for open trip planner, you would have that use for a bus lane own open trip planner. Um, you can also do it for bike sharing applications, whether it's in, on the sidewalk lane, on the road lane, and uh, so this practice is imperative for the safety of cyclists, pedestrians, and other motorists. Uh, it prepares us, persons, and the cities for the future of autonomous transportation and for connected smart cities. So I, I know there, there's a lot of content that I wish I could have gone through more. Uh, I'm happy to talk more. I've done some thorough research on the curb. So, Ideally, my advice would be for municipalities to work with the private sector and consider, start considering the curb as a transportation asset and inventory it, like some progressive cities are already doing. So that's me. Thank you.